Hello, everybody, and welcome to this video where today we are going to talk a little bit more about the muse and talk about how to kind of create the muse in your life and if that's even possible. This comes through a comment from Chasey, Chasey Delaney. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read her comment and then um, talk a little bit about it and then might like kind of try to break it down a little bit. Chasey says, you say you've not been inspired by or even had any muse for a while and that LA used to be your muse. Did you choose L.A. as a muse? Can you pick and choose your muse, or does it just happen? How does that work, and what happens when the fixation wears off of the current muse? You're done with L.A. now. I guess I'm asking for alternatives to muses. Have you got a little creative something I can do in between? Like when I'm trying to come down off a muse. Okay. So there's a lot there. Um, I don't know. I, I probably did say it. But I don't know if I said it that clearly, um, that I have not been inspired by or even had any muse for a while. That's fairly accurate. That's fairly accurate. Um, and this was from the video I did. Maybe I'll put it up here. Um, the muse in my inventory on the fix artist self-sabotage thing. Maybe I'll add this to that since it's kind of all together. Now, the question here was, did you choose LA as a muse? Yeah, I did. But I did because I had been here before. I used to live here, and then I moved away. And then I had, like, a longing for it. I missed it and wanted to come back. So, in that sense, I didn't necessarily choose it because the 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 longing the lingering wanting you know it's almost as if like my soul knew what i wanted to write kind of deal or you could look at it as like if we go back to that whole analogy with us being like antennas or lightning rods the inspiration like either comes to the antenna or strikes a lightning rod and then you run with that. So if me being pulled back to LA, being drawn to LA was a part of the muse, then that's the case. And if that's so, then I did not choose LA and LA chose me. If that makes sense. Can you pick and choose your muse or does it just happen? I think it's a little bit of both in the sense of the thing that's inspiring to you is going to hit you. Okay. And at that point, you can choose to do the undertaking, you know, or you could like fuck it off. Probably a good way to explain this is let's say you fall in love with someone that you know you shouldn't fall in love with, you know, and you know it's bad news, but you can't fight the urge that you love that person and that you want to, like, be around that person. But you do have a choice if you actually do that or not. So just because you're in love with someone that you know you shouldn't be with, you can decide if you want to pursue that or not. But then if you look at it like this, we're, we're getting deep in the fucking lofty shit here. Your muse will then become one of those things. So let's say you decide you want to be with that person. Okay. And the person in this instance is the muse then you start writing 
about how great it is to be in love and how much you love this person and um, the joy you feel and all this other shit. But if you decide that you are in love with this person, but you don't want to be with them and you like push yourself away from that, your muse then becomes the longing, the heartbreak, the soul wrenching. Do you see what I'm saying? And so just like with LA, like I had been wanting to come back to LA for a while but it just wasn't possible at the time. And I was writing a bunch of poems about how I missed L.A. And I'm trying to remember what books they're in. But I think there's one in winter. At least one in winter. There's probably some in the desert poems. Like where I just had this longing to come back here. You know? And in that instance that muse is there but depending on how you want to take that muse is like two two different things like you could either run for it or run from it i think you can do both with a muse the same muse okay so that was kind of crazy um how does that work and what happens when the fixation wears off of the current muse like, you're done with L.A. now. Okay. And then I'll get to the next part of that same question. Okay. What happens when the fixation wears off? I don't know if the fixation wears off as much as the muse leaves. And then what you're left with is like this void inside your creative soul where you know the muse used to be there and then what you end up writing about is the loss of that muse you know what i'm saying and then eventually that will get tiresome if any of you have been writing about the same shit for long periods of time and um Usually that long shit will be written out of loss or abandonment or something in the negative. There's going to come a point where you're sick and tired of fucking writing about that. You're just going to be like, just one day you're going to go, you know what? I've written 200 poems about how I used to like writing poems here. And I'm fucking tired of it. And you're going to want something different. Now, this period, this little gap, okay, is when you have no muse. And you remember how wonderful it was when the muse was with you. And you were just writing like fucking fire. Okay? But... You're going to feel like you've lost it. I've heard people say this all the time. Like, I just don't have it anymore. Or something like that. Like, um, I, I don't think I was ever great, but I used to be good. And now I just don't think I'm anything. I think I'm going to hang it up. Like, I've heard people say all sorts of shit like this. And then, sure as shit, six months later... Like, they're back on fire writing about something completely different. You know? It's just the fucking cycle. You know? it. Um, there's no, like... I don't know. There's no science behind it. There's no get-out-of-jail-free card with it. You know? It's just a thing. I think that gap is... I would like to say that that gap is the shortest cycle in the cycle of the muse, but it probably varies for everybody. I would say, let me try to think of when I got tired of it. I think I got tired of it around September, October. That's when I was like, I really don't want to fucking write about this shit anymore, but I was still doing it. And then 
you like I don't know if this is something that people all acknowledge but then you kind of run into these things where you think like oh could this be my new muse is this what I'm going after and like you know it could be like a short term thing and you write a bunch of poems about one place or one person but then that wears off too and you realize like oh shit that was more of just an inspiration for a period instead of the muse and the thing that like kept me going kind of deal you know and i think when that happens that's usually the time when people kind of take a step back and look at their body of work and say what the fuck am i doing with my life and like they they try to like rationalize um like why they've done the things they've done and try to because we're stupid creatures that like logic and stuff so we try to um like the other side of our brain kicks in and it's like okay creative side of the brain let me take over you've you've obviously crashed this car let me see if i can fix this problem we're in and you start like looking at everything and trying to make sense out of it. And the problem is there is no rational anything when it comes to how we create. We just do. And we do it because we get hit with the inspiration. You know, some of us and some of you may have gone your entire life and probably are like, I don't know if I've ever actually had the muse. I don't know if I've had that in me. I've been inspired by things. I've been inspired by places. I've been inspired by people. But I've never had that thing that like made me like sick to my stomach if I wasn't creating. I never had that thing that is like i don't know the best way i could describe it probably like the actual muse is when you are like in high school and you fall head over heels in love with somebody and the torment like the stomach turning the heart fluttering the sweaty palms the whole thing that is kind of the feeling of what it's like to be engulfed by the muse when you're creating. And if you've never experienced that as an adult or felt that, I think what you might want to try. This is going to sound fucking weird. I know. Dude, it's so weird because, like, I don't think I'm a very woo motherfucker. But the more I make videos, I realize, oh, dude, you're fucking woo as shit, dude. Just fucking lay into it. So here's what we're going to do. If you've never felt that, what I recommend you do, and do it by yourself, you know, like lock yourself in the bathroom or hide in a closet or do whatever it is you have to do. Go out in the middle of the woods where no one can hear you. And just speak out loud something along the lines of, I'm willing to accept the muse. I'm ready to accept the muse. Okay? Just say something like that out loud. Speak it into existence. Now, it's not going to fucking just happen overnight. But, like, if you guys journal it all, journal the date when you do that thing. And when the muse hits you, you're going to fucking know it hit you. Because you're not going to be able to fucking do anything else. Okay? When that happens, write down when that is. And see how long it took from you speaking that into the fucking universe to the muse hitting you, okay? Now, I don't want any of my more um, church-going folk to think that I'm saying um, to open yourself up to possession um, because it's not like that. Again, think back to like that first love in high school that made you act like a fucking idiot, okay? Go back to that. That's what we're talking about here. Okay. I've been... I, I'm going to hit up Bucks because me and him talked months ago about doing a podcast episode where we talk about the fates and the muse from 
old timey mythology and how it turns into what it is today. I think that would be really interesting and good for a lot of us here. Again, if you've never felt like that, try that, document it, um, and then come back to either this video or hit me up on a live stream once I start doing live streams again and let us know how long it took for that to fucking hit. Because a lot of us, we have this antenna, okay? Some of us are really good at pulling shit out of the atmosphere, okay? Some of us are really good at it. Some of us do it without knowing it. Some of us wish we could actually slow it down a little bit because it's too much. But then there's others of us that are so closed off that like our antennas are there, but they're not fully extended like um, old timey um, car antennas <laughs> or like um, they're not, we're just not susceptible to having that come in. And I think a lot of that too will come down to people who usually find themselves very closed off emotionally to even those around them. I think if you are more emotionally open, like hard on your sleeve kind of shit, the inspirations that come when and then the muse coming, I think you're way more susceptible for shit like that if that's the kind of person you are. And so if this isn't the kind of person you are, I would say... And honestly, like, maybe, like, go into therapy for this, but, like, talk to your therapist um, or, like, read books on how to kind of break down some walls in your life to where you can be more free and more open with your emotions. And again, this goes all the way back to me talking about how writing is therapy, you know, like, therapeutically you should be able to work out a lot of stuff just by writing it out and being completely vulnerable and completely honest. So maybe the more you do that, you'll be able to open yourself up more. So maybe just journaling in general is going to help you be susceptible to that kind of shit. Oh yeah, so back to this whole thing. I don't think fixation wears off of the muse. I think the muse leaves once it's ran its course and then you spend some time kind of struggling with the fact the muse left and dealing with it and then there comes the point where you're like i'm fucking tired of this i'm ready for something new so that's what i think happens i guess i'm asking for alternatives to muses okay so the best thing i can say to do and i have not followed this advice i should because i obviously know this there is i don't know a sort of romanticism about wallowing in your fucking self-pity that i feel like some people just have to do for a bit before they realize how good shit is when you stop doing that Okay, so if you need to rewind that and listen to that again, because that might be like hitting home for a lot of you. Okay, so there's that. But I say what you should probably do is start going back over things like art that inspires you. So if you love Bukowski, start reading your favorite Bukowski stuff again. If you love fucking David Lynch, watch a bunch of David Lynch shit. If, I don't know, you want to listen to The Fucking Cure for an hour and a half, go do that. If you want to go look at beautiful paintings, go do that. If you want to walk down to a lake and fucking feed geese fucking pieces of bread, do that if that inspires you. If you see beauty in that and, and it makes you want to create, do that. Fuck, if you love porn, watch some porn and then write about the best things about the porn you watched. This just got demonetized. I apologize. Um, so little things like that. Like you need to feed yourself. You need to feed your soul in order to get anything out of it. Just like working out. Like you're not going to build a bunch of muscle by not working out. 
okay? You're not going to lose a bunch of weight without doing things to lose weight. You're not going to get smarter without learning more, you know? Like, you need to feed into your creative spirit, you know? And you're only going to get out of it what you put into it. So if you put nothing into it, you will probably get nothing out of it. Now, the problem that a lot of creative people have, because a lot of creative people struggle with depression. And one of the biggest things about depression is that when you are depressed, you lose joy in the things that brought you happiness. So let's say... Um, your favorite thing in the world would be playing Tetris, okay? Like, you love playing Tetris. But then you're so sad one day and so depressed, so down, that, like, you look at your Game Boy or whatever the fuck you play Tetris on, and you look at it and you're going to do it, and you're like, nah, I'm not going to do it, okay? That's depression. Now, if that depression, like, cuts off the food source for your creative spirit, that's when you're going to hit a fucking wall and nothing's going to feel like it's doing anything. Nothing's going to feel like it's moving. Nothing's going to feel good. So you have to kind of force yourself into nourishing yourself, kind of like a feeding tube, you know? So whatever your favorite thing is, go back to your favorite thing of that favorite thing. And just do that over and over again. Like force feed. Okay. And then hopefully that will start giving you nourishment creatively to where you can start moving forward. And then hopefully at that point, your antenna's up, your lightning rod's secured, you know, you're ready to take it. And inspiration can start coming. And then once inspiration starts coming, if the muse shows up, then you're fucking golden, you know? But like I even said back in the old Poetic Anarchy lessons, the class on the muse, the muse comes and the muse goes. It never stays forever, okay? And that's just something that artists will always struggle with. The joy of the muse coming and the fucking like abandonment when the muse leaves. But just know if you play your cards right and you you keep yourself open, the muse will return. It'll be a different muse, but it will return. Okay. And then Chasey says, have you got a little creative something I can do in between, like when I'm trying to come down off a muse? See, this is where I think this whole thing is like confusing. Um, if you're talking about you have a muse, but you don't want the muse and you're trying to come down off the muse like that, you can't. And what you're going to be working on like that is going to be like the despair of not wanting that muse anymore. Okay, whatever it is. Like, like right now, like me will know because I feel like the muse has actually left. If the muse is still there and you're trying to come down off of it, um, I would say don't do that. Continue with it. Write it out. Until you feel like the muse has left you. And then once the muse has left you, there's nothing you can do. Like, that's it. And you could do the stuff we talked about earlier in the video. You should never want to come down off a muse. And I almost feel like, and again, we're getting lofty and flighty and shit here. But if you are telling whatever the fuck it is out there that brings the muse to us. If you're telling it telling the universe or whatever that, oh, thank you for this muse, but I don't fucking want it. Like, I I'm good. Like, you could take that back. You might not ever get another one because you're basically giving a big fucking fuck you to whatever the fuck it is that gives us that. Do you know what I'm saying? You're telling the gods that you ain't want none. So I, I would be careful about that.
But again, like, I don't know if that's superstitious on my part, but that's just kind of how I live my shit. You know, I think you need to ride it out until it actually leaves. And then you're going to be grieving the loss of that. And so there will be some great art that comes out of that. But then you will eventually get to the point where you're tired of grieving and you're ready to move on to something else. Okay. So, Chasey, thank you for that. All those questions. That was fucking gold. And I hope this was helpful. If it was, do the whole like, subscribe, leave a comment, share, all that fun stuff that we love so much. And um, let me know in the comments, like, what you think about this. Like, have you dealt with anything like this? When you do, how do you do it? How do you fucking deal with shit? Um, and if you're going to do that thing where you go and say that you're ready for the muse to come and you're willing to accept the muse, let me know you're doing that. That's fucking awesome. And let me know how that works out. But yeah, any other questions you guys have like this, um, always you can send them in at ihatematwallgmail.com. I had um, a few people tell me that they have a bunch of questions about stuff and they don't know how to contact me or about it. And I'm like, Dude, you left it in the comments that you want to contact me. You just did. So um, do that or send questions to ihatematwallgmail.com. If you've sent emails in already and I haven't got back to you yet, today is the day I'm going through my emails. So I'm trying to like get all that shit. Okay. So join the Anarchy Crew um, button down below. Keep buying my books on Amazon. I'm going to try to get my Shopify stuff up very soon before the first of february okay so with all that said everybody tap hard and i will talk to you all later i just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible anarchy crew and my followers on patreon i appreciate the hell out of you guys thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible you guys are awesome and if you'd like to join the crew or the anarchy crew just hit the join button beneath this video and if you'd like to become a member of my patreon you can run over to the link down below to do that as well thank you